Hey there, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This time it is a Blu-ray and DVD update. Uh, most of these I've picked up probably in the last week or so. First off, one is a gift from my good friend Mike OCP Communications. Rapid Fire on Blu-ray. This is from Twilight Times. He told me uh, not too long ago that he got this for me, which that was kind of him. Didn't expect that. I did send him something in the mail. Hopefully, it gets to him soon. Figured at least I could do a bit of thanks. But yeah, Rapid Fire. Love this film. Brandon Lee. Uh, the commentary I do with my friend Effrey should still be up on my channel. Great film. Brandon Lee is one. Is missed the guy so much. And. Wonderful flip by Dwight H. Little, the director of March for Death and Halloween 4. I, I checked the film out pretty quickly. There's a nice little booklet where they talk about uh, who's the person that Julie Tirgo said some really nice things about the film. He has some really cool pictures. Not happy this Twilight time because they do the bullshit 3000 limited thing, but this is a really wonderful gift. There is artwork on the disc. Again, features, you're not getting much for features. You're getting a trailer, you get a five minute featurette from back in the day, which is Brandon Lee talking about the film, and then another two, two and a half minutes. Feature from back in the day called Introducing Brandon Lee. So, I mean, it's nice to see those little bits. And then you have an audio commentary with composer Christopher Young and film historian Nick Redman. Try to listen to the commentary. It's just about the music, the score, which is not a bad score. Christopher Young seems like a nice guy. Of course, he did Hellraiser, Hellraiser 2, The Fly. Pretty much talks about what goes into composing a film, making a film, how you know he doesn't want to be known as just the guy who did Hellraiser. Um, says some nice things about working with Dwight H. Little because he also worked with him on Murder at 1600. Seems like he likes the film. Tells a nice story about Brandon Lee, how there was like a premiere or wa something about watching the film after it was in its finishing stages. Brandon Lee some, said some really nice things to Christopher Young about the score, saying, "Oh, your music helped my performance. Uh, be you know, be better." And Christopher Young really took that to heart. And Christopher Young said a uh, very nice thing. Said, "Man, I, I want to work on all this guy's movies." And you know, be, him and the historian being sad about what happened with Brandon Lee. So that was a nice little story. But again, unless you're really big into music and musical scores, you're not going to get much. From the commentary, in my opinion, so you're not. First off, you're getting this. You don't be paying a chunk of money, I'm sure. And you're not getting it for the features, because other than that, again, it's little features from back in the day in a trailer. No deleted scenes. No new interviews with Dwight H. Little or Alan B. McElroy. I wish that was the case, because Alan B. McElroy did a wonderful job on the commentary for Halloween 4 DVD about writing the film. We'd love to have had Alan B. McElroy or Dwight H. Little talk about the movie. Maybe both of them be on a commentary. But the film looked great. I'm a big fan of the movie, so it's very nice to have this on Blu-ray. Thanks a lot to my friend Michael CP. Then this is the stuff I picked up. Some DVDs. First off, Open Windows. Picked this up because I like Elijah Wood. I have some of his films, Grand Piano, which I think is an underrated flick. Sort of a think a phone booth, but in a concert hall, music hall, with Elijah Wood playing a piano and John Tuesday who's a sniper, pretty much telling him if you play the wrong note, I'm going to shoot you. I review Grand Piano, uh, Cooties, which I do like. I do want to pick up the Maniac remake on DVD. It's been a while since I've seen that, and remember it being surprisingly good. So but this is another one I want to give a look. Not sure how I feel about it because. It's interesting on the visual note because it's doing the stuff that Unfriended did, but in the thriller aspect. 
it just in the third act it's not a downbeat ending it just does a lot of twists and turns and you're wondering did it really need this twist and turn stuff in the third act and it's definitely a film that you have to be suspension of disbelief so I mean I didn't hate the film maybe it's a film if I watch again I like more uh, again, it was different. It was interesting on on the visual note because all it takes place on a laptop, and the focusing on different windows that open on his laptop. But uh, I don't know the the twists and turns in the third hour was kind of like, what the fuck? Kind of that reaction. Taint a film no one knows about. Uh, produced by Erin Yablons, music by Lalo Schifrin. This is a film I saw when I was a kid. I remember having a little bit of fun with. The stars James Garner, may he rest in peace. Also has C. Thomas Howell, James Cromwell, and Shirley Jones from the Partridge family. James Garner is the sergeant major who saves this woman from this asshole sheriff. The sheriff can't get to James Garner, so they gets to James Garner's son, puts him in jail for a crime he didn't commit. James Garner's pissed, so he's like, fuck that. Takes his own personal Sherman tank, busts his son out of jail, and they try to make it across the border to another state to get a fair trial and get some law and order and justice. So, interesting idea. James Garner, see how to do a nice job. James Cromwell is like the asshole deputy to the evil sheriff. Yeah, an interesting little film that no one talks about, no one may even even know about. Just I just like the idea. I thought James Garner and C. how worked well together. And fun idea of a guy having his own tank and busting his kid out of jail with it. And yes, this is a Good Times release. So right there. So it's not the best DVD. But, uh, I think this came out in 1984, I believe. Decent little flick. Tales from the Crypt, the darts, Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. Not Tales from the Crypt. I, I think Times of Union one time said this is the unofficial real Creep Show three. Got this because one, it's a pretty decent anthology of three stories. One with Steve Buscemi, Christian Slater, and Julianne Moore, and it deals with a mummy. Second story where David Johansson from Struge, he also sang that song, Hot, 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 da 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 da. He's on fire, he's, he's hot, hot. That guy, he's in the second story about a hip man trying to kill a cat. And then the third story has James Remar as a good guy, also has Ray Don Chan, and it deals with this gargoyle. And a bit of a tragic story. What's nice about this DVD, it has a commentary with the director, John Harrison, who is a composer. He did the music for George Romero's Day of the Dead, among other movies. And on the commentary is George Romero, who wrote one of the stories, the, the cat one. It was cool to hear George Romero. I miss the guy. May he rest in peace. So he's on the commentary with the director, John Harrison. So that was nice. So glad to have this as part of my collection. You have effect, really nice effects work by TMB. Cool looking gargoyle and some nice gory bits with a cat and decent looking mummy. Again, fun anthology movie. Never so much of the Tales of the Dark Side movie, I mean the series, but the movie's pretty decent. This cover sucks though, it's just shitty Photoshop bullshit. The Bay. This is a film I reviewed long ago, and I even said in that review, I'm not sure how I feel about it. It was sort of a mixed review. This is back when I had a 15-minute limit, so it was in two parts, like 15, 20-minute limit. And watching again, I do say I liked it. First time I saw it, it was mixed. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Watching it again, I liked it. it, it it's definitely... The problems I had were not so much problems. I think what kind of threw me off the first time I saw it, there's not really a lead character. There kind of is with this woman who is talking after the fact, and she's a reporter, but she's not 
in the film a lot. There's many moments where it's, it's about this town. It's a found footage, but it's like a bunch of footage put together as if it was a documentary about this small town by the bay and these isopods, red shit, and sort of an outbreak type of movie. I don't watch it again. It was pretty creepy. It's pretty creepy at times. The director is Barry Levinson, the guy who did Rain Man, Toys, very underrated Robin Williams film. Again, the way it was put together, it's not one narrative, unless the narrative you want to say is, you know, this whole town did fucked up by this thing, but you see a bunch of different, like, little pieces here from the doctor, little pieces here from a random uh, girl, piece here from these divers, and later on their bodies are found, and this is their footage from before. And maybe that threw me off at first, because usually found footage, you focus on one or two set of characters, and here, it's a bunch of stuff, but... This is not a bad movie. Of the found footage genre, I would say the 1999 Blair Witch Project, As Above, So Below, exists. Like that stuff will be the top of the list. You know, Cloverfield, Chronicle. But if, if I did a top 10 list, this would be on there. The Tunnel, that's very up there. That, the Tunnel would be in my top three. Blair Witch Project, 1999 one, not the newer shitty one. The Tunnel and As Above So Bold would be probably my top three, then it exists. And I'm not sure what else, but this would be in the top ten. Watch it, you know. If I couldn't make my mind up before, watch it, you know, I'm like, not a bad movie. Not a bad film. Hell, I like it more than these two fucking movies. Insidious, it's not a badly directed film. Maybe I need to see the film again. I definitely like it better than any of the fucking Paranormal Activity movies. And then these came in today. Deadpool 2. I'm a fan of this movie. I would say if I had to pick so far, it was between Mission Impossible Fallout and this one is my favorite of the year. If I had to pick, I would say this one. And it's hard to pick between. I would say this one, especially watching this Blu-ray. Fun Blu-ray. It has both cuts of the film. It has the super duper cut as well as the theatrical cut. It's nice that they put both versions on there. On the theatrical cut, there is a commentary, which involves Ryan Reynolds, as well as the director and the writers. Fun commentary. You have a bunch of the stuff from online, like the Celine Dion music video and the behind the scenes of the music video that Celine Dion did. The trailers, the water is wet, where he's a Bob Ross, like that fun stuff. You have some interviews, a, a bunch of interviews, like once 15 minutes long, once 10 minutes long. Dad Reel. Delete extended scenes. It's only like two minutes worth, so it's not a lot. Alternate tapes. Cast of characters. Deadpool Family Values. That's like 15 minutes. David Leach, not Lynch, directing Deadpool 2, so, you know, interview with the director. Fun Sack 2, that's where a bunch of that stuff in the commentary, having two versions of the film. That was a lot of fun, so, very entertaining movie. And I easily, yeah, I could say, I don't mind the first movie, but I think this was an improvement on the first movie. I had a hesitance on this, but I decided to do get Deep Rising. The reason I had hesitance from what it seems like the picture quality is as good as the Mill Creek Entertainment one, where Deep Rising was on the same disc as the Puppet Masters with Donald Sutherland. I'm like, how could the picture quality be? I remember when this was announced, they said it's a new 4K scan. That disappeared really quickly because it's not on here or here. And the picture quality is nice. But the picture quality was actually nice on the Mill Creek Entertainment one. The reason I picked it up, because fuck it, I had the money. I'm a huge fan of this movie. I'm one of the biggest fans of this film. And to check out the special features. You have a commentary with director Steven Summers and editor Bob 
Dupe say. It's nice to hear what Steven Summers has to say about the making of the film. Interviews with actors Wes Studi, Kevin O'Connor, and Thinny Heald. Interview with the second unit director Dean Cundy. Interview with some of the uh, special effects guys. Interviews with some of the makeup effects guys. Interview with the DP. Behind the scenes. Trailer. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a f if I stop stuttering. I'm a fan of the film. I'm a sucker for the movie. No matter how much I bitch about it, things won't change. Uh, I realized that long ago. And I realize this is 20 years old. 20 years old. Technically, it passed because this came out in January of 1998, but you know, still 20 years before this came out. I don't know if I'll do a fan commentary. Just to be honest, no one really watches the fan commentaries I do. Unless it's a ranting commentary that more people watch. But if, like if I do a fan commentary on a film I like, then not many people watch it. But you know, That's why you know nowadays I sort of have to do stuff that me, myself, will enjoy and like. Unless there's some incentive to it, of course. Like, you know, the nice guy Tony, he sent me a some money to review four films you know that was nice once in a blue moon that happens and actually thanks to Tony it helped get me this as well as Deadpool 2 so Tony thank you for that so yeah, huge fan of this movie very underrated movie and I got this I have a pretty decent sized wrestling DVD collection. I'm a big fan of Diamond Dallas Page. I remember long ago, I'm like, man, how come they don't do a DDP DVD? Well, they did. Positively Living. Definitely one of my favorite wrestlers. Probably my favorite wrestler in the WCW era. Along with Booker T. Steen's pretty cool, too. But you have a documentary on the guy. You have a bunch of matches he had. Uh, you can't really the glare, and you can't see it, but him doing the the bang. So the upcoming diamond cutter matches include stuff like in 1991, Diamond Dallas Page and Mike Graham versus. Justin Liger and Bill Kazmier, Kazmier. Uh, later on, DDP and Carl Malone versus Hogan and Dennis Rodman. DDP and Jay Leno versus Hogan and Eric Bischoff. DDP versus Goldberg. DDP versus Bret the Hitman Hart. DDP and Bam Bam Bigelow versus Raven and Saturn. DDP versus Christian. This was actually WrestleMania 18. It's the only WWE one on here. DDP vs. Steen, DDP vs. Raven, DDP vs. Chris Jericho, DDP vs. Macho Man Randy Savage. DDP vs. Hulk Hogan, DDP vs. Eddie Guerrero. Uh, Probably could have put a bit more, like maybe some more of the DDP versus Hulk to, I mean, uh, DDP versus Macho Man Randy Savage. They only have one of them. Does it seem like they had a really good uh, back and forth between the two? But yeah. Forget how. How, well, it says here approximately running time seven hours for everything. But yeah, DDP. It's me. It's DDP. So, that is my DVD and Blu ray update. Thanks for watching. Take care. And we will see you guys later. Bye bye.